If you would like to see this video uncensored, please check out my Patreon link in the description as it is right there, or just type in patreon.com slash shitsnap. Yorobun, annyeonghaseyo! It's your baby girl, Jess! And I have been working my cute little titties off for this fucking video. Ever since I did Genshin character anti tier list, I have been getting nonstop, even at anime cons. They're like, what are you gonna do another one? People loved it. I wanna ask why, but legit, I made it for a reason. The anti priest, that's what they call me, spreading the word, word of Jesus and times anti lore. I, please, I'm going to hell for that sentence. So ever since people have brought it up, I've been thinking what other series that I at least know of that has a lot of characters to choose from. And I was asking this to my husband, Bart, aka Gigguk. His answer was it didn't even didn't even miss a beat. It was fate. If you know of this series, fate stay night, fate stay awake. I don't, there's a lot of fates. None of you don't know what the fate series is. I am not the person you should be listening to about. I can, I don't, I don't really know what to tell you. I've seen a bit of Fate Stay Night. I've seen a bit of Fate Zero. There's a lot of characters and a lot of them are kind of like copy paste versions of like other characters. You'll see in the video what I mean. But if you're looking for me to do a storyline or what the hell fate is, it's a very complicated, very, very complicated story, grail wars and all that. I know, once again, my husband did a video detailing everything about it. If you're interested, go watch that. I just like the pretty characters. And I thought, hey, why not? There's so many characters, so much choice, you know? It's Sophie's choice over here. Well, Sydney's choice, really. But after I began, it was daunting. This video, looking through... I'm, I'm a connoisseur. I look at hentai all the time. It's just, it's what I do. It's partly my job. In this case scenario, this was, it was a lot. And it took me days looking through all these characters hentais. And I can say I've compiled some of the best that I can find. You know, the best characters or, you know, so maybe some of the worst. But I know if I did every single fake character, this video would never end. I would be making this hentai tier list up into my deathbed with my grandchildren surrounding me, crying, asking why I devoted my life to making this tier list instead of loving them and their children. You know, you know, you get the point. Now, my judgments of this tier list come from my own likes. This is my opinion. Nothing from a hentai expert, I would like to say, but let's be honest. But mostly I'm judging each character by how many any tags they have available of how good usually is the art like for example if i find a character that doesn't have many works of them but all the works are kind of just vanilla and just basic tags i would be raking it lower you know it wouldn't be in a high tag for that character so instead of yapping on on about it let's fucking begin this but before we continue i would like to give thanks to today's sponsor secret with sophia light which is a game you can get on co site DL Site is a website that offers indie otaku products like manga, music, games, as well as much, much more. They have an all ages version on their website, as well as an adult version as well that caters to both men and women. They offer over 80,000 English translated products, so you're bound to find something. Right now, DL Site has a special little something. A new full game available for download on their website called Secret with Sophia Light but it's free for a limited time only. And there's no credit card needed. Secret with Sophia Light starts as an all ages version of the game with your own maid Sophia doting on you. As you get further in the game, Sophia starts to show her affection for you in <coughs> various ways. Various NSFW ways. And to see that, you have to upgrade to the NSFW version. To get this game as well as any other potential free works, you can register on DL Site. DL Site is a site I often use to read manga or play games, degenerate or not, so it comes with a heavy recommendation that you guys check them out. Be sure to check out all the links in my description because they are all right there. Thank you again to DL Site for the sponsor, and now back to the video. So I'm gonna start with one of the first people that I think of when I think of Fate. And I think of Saber. I'm sure a lot of you guys would agree she was kind of the main face of Fate. And I'm talking normal Saber, okay? I'm not talking about, you know, Red Saber, Purple Saber, Saber, like Beat Saber. I'm just talking Saber, alright? Starting off with Saber, it was actually very surprising because they're 
weren't nearly as many works of her as I thought that I, there would be that I would find. And, but don't get me wrong, she's an older character. Fate is an older series. So I expect to see like tens upon tens of thousands of her. But yeah, there wasn't such a ludicrous amount. But I can tell you with what we have, which is a lot, Still, we are starting off goddamn strong, okay? I looked at some of the most popular ones of Saber and uh, uh, the quality because the variation, the variation, the variation of Saber Hentai was delectable. The main amuse bush of this course to die for. Of course, we got the obvious like notes of the Rin times Saber or, you know, the very cliche but incredibly common Saber times Emia vanilla tags. But then we got, then we got a little twist, a little lemony mix in there. Forget the Saber gang things. We're talking about something a little bit zestier because all of them have gang things. We got some Saber with tentacles. You know, a little out there, but nothing too obscure. I don't even personally think tentacles appear in Fate, but you know what? This is die. This is, this this is our creative freedom! We got quite a bit of Ugly Bastards and NTR, which, you know, that's just personally, I like that. Saber times Ugly Bastards, it's just something about it. It's whimsical, like a slight breeze on a very sunny day. Got some armpits in there. We got, I think, you know what? I'm gonna go on a limb here and assume there's a little bit of everything of Saber. And Saber being one of the faces, or if not the face of fate, the art in so, especially the popular works, it's gorgeous, it's that's exactly what she deserves. And one of the things I found the most interesting is because I looked through a lot of like doujins that are available for a Saber and some of them dated back to like right near the beginning. So it's kind of interesting to see the evolution of hentai art change throughout the years via Saber. So altogether, I'm gonna say Saber was 100% the most interesting out of this list that I've seen. You can get a little bit of everything from Saber. In the end, I truly believe that there's no tag that I would see with her that would surprise me. It's gotta be S tier. After that, I will do Emiya and I'm gonna do Emiya really quick because the main male lead character from a mostly predominantly female cast. I'm just gonna put Emiya as... Uh, it's kind of like it has to be S tier. I'm pretty sure he fucked every single female fate. Well, not just female, female. He fucked every fate character. Some of the art on those fate characters are... Phew, any tag again. Variation, 10 out of 10. Next up, Ryder. Now, I don't recall much of Ryder. They were in Fate Stay Night. I watched Fate Stay Night when I was really young, and also I didn't really get it, so I didn't really want it. I think my brain was just like, Ye yeet memories no more. And I feel like maybe some others feel the same because compared, of course, to Saber, not as many uh, entries uh, about Ryder. Ryder's tags frightened me because there was a typical, of course, Emmy at times Ryder or, you know, gang gang. Wow, shocker. Ryder with invisible anti men. But then uh, there, I'd be thrown through a loop because then I'd just see a horse. Horses, which is something like I don't even like finishing the sentence. I didn't find incredibly uncommon looking through some fate characters, but especially for her. There's an obvious joke in here about her name being Ryder, but I feel like that dead horse is beaten long ago and she probably f***ed it. But I do actually really love the creative names for Ryder's doujins because there would be like, I'll just be going through like a Ryder times, you know, soul mail, Anti invisible hentai guy, and it'll be called like Rider or Die. And the art will be ridiculously beautiful. She has a very mature woman, older sister type of look. So I thought after doing some research into her character, I would be getting, you know, a very ada ada more like, you know, type of a uh, hentai. But no, I, uh, I did not. She didn't have a ridiculous amount of options. I'm gonna have to give her a B tier. It was pretty, like, the art was gorgeous. Like, I genuinely did like the title Rider or Die. Next, we're gonna be talking about my man, Gilgamesh. And you know what? It kills me inside. It absolutely, disgustingly murders my insides that there are not more Gilgamesh ties out there available. It is slander to the human race. I'm, I, I'm not gonna cry right now. I'm not doing this. Maybe I've just not been looking in the right places. I, that's all I can tell myself to still have hope. But from what I saw, there wasn't many. And you, what was available, not my cup of tea. A lot of it was quite controversial. I don't want to get into it from there. There is some stuff I don't want. <laughs> Let's just say he doesn't carry the same character archetype in his ties. I thought there would be a bit more yaoi, but no, not really. There, there's some, of course, there's some. There is one unbelievably gorgeous hentai that I've seen of him called Zetai Mash Sensen. Of course, there was a lot of him doing like... 
No, no. And even the ones where his character stayed the same type of Gilgamesh that we know, his face during them would be like the same. You know how you're when you're, you know, reading a doujin or anything like that. You know, the girls always, the face is like, it's so expressive and the guys are just kind of like the whole time, you know, it's like, okay. So it kills me. Genuinely, I, I'm not, I, <laughs> I said I wouldn't do this. It kills me, but he is D tier. Next is the best girl. Hands down, I will not take any slander, and that is Rin. And I will die by the fact that I feel Sundari's and Entai are the top anime archetype, female, male, and I don't care. I love it, I adore it, it's, it's great. And even after reading so many Entai's of Rin, I stand by that fact even more so. A lot of her didojins were vanilla, and if you know me, I don't really like the vanilla tank, it's kind of, mm. A lot of it was, you know, like, Rin times Emia, Rin times Archer, which personally I really, I, I'll get into Archer later. Love that. But then there were some tags thrown in there that I was just like, interesting. Hmm? Like I saw some where she was a human pet. I saw one where her face and her ass were like a toilet. Rin was, I think the only girl I saw with as many tags of gaping holes. That definitely was one of her main things. All of her holes were just, they were Gaping. Like Shia LaBeouf would have had a field day. With the head and ass toilet one, it was confusing. I don't know, but a lot of people seem to like when people are actually. I, I, I'm not gonna get into it. I'm not gonna get into it, City. Don't you dare. That's a whole other video you could be doing. But to go back to my point, one of the reasons that I find Sundari's so good in Hentai is the expressions that they do, is the personality that they invoke. You know, I, I love, love, adore when a somebody who kind of comes off as angry or hateful kind of starts opening up and you know it, it makes you feel like wonderful it makes you feel like a little something in your heart you know mm. like i don't even like emmy as a character but i you know some of the dialogue between him and rin after they kind of start overcoming her sundariness and she became more dere it was just tickety boo compared to the other characters that emia seems to go and have like just takes and it goes to pound town with and the art is always top tier s tier i don't think this was any guess this is shocking to anybody it's s rin is s tier next up is sakura mato i was beyond frightened to look at sakura if you know the fate series or even if you just know of this character it's obvious as to why and it's the bugs it's the bugs i'll just be sitting there having a good day and then it's just oh my god I just, I don't want to think about it, I don't. But one of the other reasons I was frightened was because I found one when I first moved to Japan. And one of the first things I saw was this really... I talked about it in the video once. It's called Sakura Drop. I, there's, there's pictures on the screen of it. With her with really deformed muscles. I love muscle girls, but there is an extent to the deformity that that base was there. But genuinely, as I look deeper into Sakura, she doesn't seem like that all that popular of a character. You know, I would have thought like the kind of like, oh, so quiet. I mean, it would have been like bee's knees okay people love that shit especially in anime but no there wasn't i mean there's still a lot you know she's in a, one of the earliest fake characters to exist but what was available was gorgeous there was one that really stood out to me called the book of sakura and it was just a you know a typical sex one between emia and sakura but the art holy my it's one of the best works i've seen from all the characters on this list fully colored it's shaded the amount of detail and everything it's just it blew me away the art style especially like with the eyes like mm, and you know there wasn't nearly as many bug days as i thought there would be like there there were there were a lot there were not a lot but there were definitely some insect eyes where did my life begin and end to uh to say that out loud. But besides that really uncomfortable one, it's kind of was the typical tags, but the art in those tags, pff, gorgeous. Phenomenal, really. So it has to be A tier. Next is Gudao, where Gudao is another one of Fate's main characters from Fate Grand Order. I don't know. But because he's one of the main characters, and I think in his series there were even more females, I'm going to have to just copy and paste what I said about Emia and just put him in a, a He's S tier. Next is Shielder, aka Mash. I don't know who this is. All I know is I've seen this bitch too many times that I'd like to mention. So beforehand, I will start by saying Mash is clearly one of the most popular characters. And this is actually shocking to me because most of the characters that uh, were very popular who had like so many works, I've seen, I've heard of. Meg Mash Dojin, then their art has to be at the peak that it is available because like you're looking into the eyes of God. 
gorgeous. We got titles like Zetai Mash, Mash's Secret Training Regimen. I love Bangers and Mash, which actually isn't a title. I made that up, but I really think that would be a great a great title, just so anybody knows that they're there. Just listen. Mash the Lewd Servant. I love Mash's bubbly butt. Her fan base is goddamn dedicated. The art is impeccable in every single one of her works. A lot of the artwork I've seen for a lot of these characters, gorgeous, of course. It feels like every work, like, it stand out beautiful for her. The tags weren't amazing, as it was mostly just, you know, like, bikini, typical sex, blah, blah, blah. But there would be, like, really good thrown-in ones there, you know, just like, I love me some ugly bastards. Got some NTR in there, too, very simple bitch. You really wouldn't, you wouldn't go wrong. You couldn't go wrong with MASH. S tier. Next is Nightingale. And I love Nightingale's design. It is, right when I've seen it, I'm like, bitch, say less. Show less. You know when you look at a character's face design and you're like, I know exactly what anti you're going to be in. That is how I felt with Nightingale. Now, there were quite a few titles of Nightingale. Not a ludicrous amount, but quite a few. Uh, enough to make me realize that she's probably a nurse in the series because I'd say a good, like, 90% of the tags with her or her titles had nurse in it, where she was a nurse. But what I meant by when I was looking at her design of her face and I wasn't surprised about is that one of the tags that was most common with her was emotionless sex. Or I really don't really care for the, that tag. Because if I want to see a guy fuck something emotionless, then I would go on Pornhub and type in guy who fucks blow up doll. But even the blow up dolls have like a face on it, you know? They're not just kind of like... The art was good, it was fine, and it was a nice variation to see the nurse tag thrown in there compared to all of the other characters that I looked at. I didn't take away anything from Night, you know, Nightingale that I was like, mm, this is the bee's knees. So for me, it's gotta be D tier. Next up is the one that we all know and love, Astolfo. This is the number one motherfucker that you don't need to look far or wide to find hentai of, okay? You can literally just open up Twitter, and then one of the first things you're going to see is Astolfo, he was quite the obvious ride, but quite the ride still to look through. There's so many gang things. Him being the sole male and him just f***ing everybody in fate, you know? <laughs> there was quite a few yaois with Astolfo times Gudao. But then I would come across tags like self -sessed? And then I would see ones with like Shimakaze times Astolfo. And Shimakaze's not even from the same series, but there was quite a lot of those. I didn't need to look much deeper to find out more than what I know about Astolfo. I knew getting into this what most of the stuff I would be seeing. Sure, there was some like surprise tags in there, but I knew I'm not surprised. You're gonna wanna look at Astolfo if you're craving something with Yaoi or something, you know, with a sassy guy who does gangbangs or Shimakaze stuff, Utenar, you know, it's a little bit of, it's yes, yes. You know that you know the type. You know the type of tags I'm that's gathered that suits it to that. But if you are into that, then I feel like Astolfo is S tier for sure. But for me, A tier. Next is Minamoto no Raiko. And Jesus goddamn Christ! Is she fing everywhere? I don't know who she is. Mash uh, sure, I don't know. I've I have i have seen her obviously around the house, unfortunately. She's my husband's mistress in his head. But this I have never seen or heard of before, but fuck me. Is she popular? Everywhere you look, she is in your face. Every single part of her. After looking at her, you're not really gonna be shocked why, because you know, she has that MILF type of look. She's the only character I've seen that really kind of has that kind of look in this series. I don't know what is with characters being attached to the MILF tag, because she was, she was attached to the MILF tag. I don't know if she's a mom, I don't think so. And armpit licking. They go hand in hand together all the time. I don't see the correlation, but there apparently has to be one. And definitely out of all the characters in this Fate series video that I have looked through, she definitely has the most Ma ada ada type energy. She is very clearly a fan favorite. You know, not just due to the very obvious gang bangs, because she also is a part of every every character in this, I think, is a part of it. It's one gang bang that they all had together. But she's also a fan favorite, I think, because a lot of her hentais also have like the no face invisible hentai men. The kind where it's like you're supposed to imagine yourself fing the character, not, you know, another character fing them. You know, it's trying to be like, oh, you know. POV. Like, the only thing that has any detail towards the guy in the series is his dick. And I guess that's supposed to be your mom. It's supposed to be your, your little anime dick. And I will say, Raiko was a refreshing little breath of freshness in my lungs. Honestly, I, you know, the milk tier, hell yeah. You, let's go, baby. But besides that, the art is also just generally very gorgeous. I think, once again, it's kind of the same effect of what MASH had. Artists see Raiko and they're like, I have to make this the most perfect thing 
that I can ever make ever. So S tier. Next character is Scat Hatch. Scatch, Scat. <laughs> Scat. I really don't like the name, but Scat Hatch seems just as popular as Raiko. And personally, I wasn't all that impressed with the options available for this character, even though there were many. Like the art was generally very gorgeous. Like there was one titled called Move On Up and the expressions, the details, oh my God, like a full course Michelin star meal, just gorgeous. But a lot of the tags were just the kind of obvious ones for the other girls, but they offered more. Like it was mostly just gang gang and vanilla with Gudao. I think their personality comes off from what I've looked into this character as a very strong woman. Very tough, mature, noble. And from the works that I've seen of them, it doesn't, like her personality does not bode well. It doesn't come off well in hentai. Like it's very lackluster. Like she gives off more dominant female energy, but in the hentai, it's definitely not that kind of case. Like her expressions are just not there. She's just kind of like, hmm. Oh, hmm. the whole time, but it's just like, babe, you're not in charge. Like, her expressions are there, but they're very minimal. You know, they're minimal. And listen, I don't need intense ahe gao to enjoy a title, but I feel like just a bit of blushing and a haughty smile the whole time, you know, the whole time doesn't give you really much of anything. I'm gonna say C tier. Next is Shuten Doji. I remember seeing this character everywhere when the character design first came out because it is so different to what the other girls look like. Like this character has very much of a sort of Oni type of look, you know, has horns. It looks like an anime demon. And the other girls, you know, kind of look like more fighting, more, you know, they have more basic, like they don't have mythical designs. And of course, while doing this video, not knowing all the characters in this series, um, I, I did want to know more about them. So I did some research into Shuten Doji. And I found that it is, of course, like every other character in the series, based off of a real person, or at least an urban legend. And so Shuten Doji was based off of a legend of a demon lord that was defeated by somebody called Minamoto no Raiko. Which means there's a lot of doujin with them f***ing. But besides Raiko, it would just be Gudao, and it'd also just be a lot of gang f***ing, of course. But even though there was still quite a lot of Gudao, and just them together, there was quite a good variation to them. Like, there was one that I came across that had, like, vaginal sticker as a tag. We got sunglasses, which is just like, okay, we love a fashionable bitch. We also had some Futanari thrown in there, which was incredible. It really wasn't common for a lot of the characters I looked at. There's a really good mix of tags compared to some of the other characters I looked at. And some of the art, bae, are you kidding me? I mean, <laughs> Asanagi made one, but nothing really stood out to me. Nothing that I'm gonna want to come back and write home about. So I'm gonna have to say Shuten Doji, B tier. Next is a character called BB. An AI character that I knew by appearances alone, I would probably like. She's got that very enthusiastic, excited to be here kind of energy. Like I'm excited to do the work and I'm excited to do it well. But little did I know how well and how excited she was to do it. She has so many different tags and bruh, the art! I came across one of the series that they are in called Loveless and not not like the old series, you know, but it's just called Loveless and uh, oh my god, I'm, uh, I, I'm dying because it's so gorgeous just thinking about it. And also I had to burp. There's also another one called Transparent. And I personally, I really love smug and excitable characters in hentai because once again, the expressions are always very good. They're very vivid and thrown in your face. There's quite a few tags that she also had that I haven't seen attached to the other characters like Onohole or Yandere and a lot of clones for some reason. I'm guessing because she's an AI that there, she, there's a lot of like self sess clones stuff. I don't know. But there was a lot thrown in there that I'm like, Bay, where are we going? And I would love to give BBS tier, but it's kind of like through all the works I've read, it's missing like a sort of the voom, you know, something to make me want to like remember, I like circle back to her. Like she needed a bit more flavor, a little zest, a little more salt to make that dish very creamy and tantalizing. She's rememberable, but not to a point where I'm, I'm gonna like... <laughs> so we got some extra zest, but not enough. I'm gonna have to say A tier. Next is the Joan of Arc. More like Joan of Barf. <laughs> you get the reference, you get it. It is almost weird seeing how popular this character is because I can say nearly out of 
everyone on this list, you know, besides Saber, she's probably one of the most popular by far. So with that being said, I had a lot of shit to look through for this character. There were the vanilla options, sure, as there always are. Can't escape it. It's just the rule of the world at this fucking point. I will never escape this world without thinking about Gudo's p going into one fake girl. But there's quite a healthy mix of Yuri thrown in there. A lot of self-cessed, which we will get into later. There's a, there's a reason. As well as incest, but I think it was probably just the self cess sort of essence. And I, I want it, all it did was make me kind of think more deeper into the biology of self cessed But either way, either way, I'm not getting into this. Quite a few Futanaris again. Majority of the works were definitely very different, very different taste compared to the others. You know, they offered a little, a different type of zest that I'm not used to. And considering how popular she is, I'm not surprised at all. Like, not at all. Joan of Arc is definitely, or John de, Jan de Arc, you know, I'm just gonna say Joan of Arc because that's what I, <laughs> Joan of Arc is definitely a comfortable option if you're looking for something good. If you're looking for a different type of spice, I should actually kind of just say. If you want to feel out the waters, if you're looking to experiment, if you're looking to kiss and tell about, I don't know, just looking to find out about what your pee pee enjoys and what it doesn't, you can't go wrong. Really, I promise you, Joan of Arc will be an experience for you. And I guarantee if you find something, you're gonna find a work that you're gonna wanna keep coming back to, a one that you're gonna be saving. S tier. And next is Joan Alter, which kinda goes back to what I was saying before about the self cess bit. By looking at this design, you wouldn't believe me, but believe it or not, there is a there is a difference between the characters. Okay, Joan Alter is the embodiment of hate created by Gills for the sole purpose of revenge, okay? There is a difference. But yeah, it goes without saying, a lot of her tags are mostly solely self sessed two female leads and a male, which would of course be Alter, Joan of Arc, Joan of Arc, and Gudau. And then just Vanilla, which, you know, compared to the person that she is based off of, Joan of Arc, or is her, or whatever, it lacks vuvu. It lacks that yum 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 in that tum tum tum, you know? Art is amazing, and if you're looking for those tags, if that's your spiel, then you really will probably enjoy this. But nonetheless, I'm gonna have to say Joan Alter, P tier. Next is Ishtar. Gorgeous queen, 10 out of 10, will not take any slander again, lover. Okay, yes, she is also a literal kind of copy and paste of Rin, but there, there's differences, there's differences. Differences like, Jesus Christ, the design, the jewelry, the outfit! She has that sass and the way she talks and walks, the way her hair is, just, honestly, I prefer, I prefer, it's the way she looks, I'm not gonna say, I, you know, to, I just, I'm just, I'm just saying, listen, listen. Ishtar is perfect and I will not allow anything other than that to be said, ever, ever. I don't know why, but in every doujin I read of her, her ass, her ass is perfect. It's supple, it's well shaded and colored, it is perfect. It's perfect. And there was one doujin I read that actually made me start paying attention to her ass and all the other doujins. And I'm gonna put the picture up here, but it's just the way she has her hand, the confidence in it, the way it's like just so perfectly like a little peachy little ass and just bite into it. I wanna bite your ass. Her smug and proud personality adds so much splendor to every title, every title. It's perfection, I promise. And you know what? I bet you think you know. I bet you think you think I am going to give her an S tier. And I, I would like to, I wish I could, but I would be lying to you all, but most importantly, myself. Because although her personality is perfect and anti, and although the art and everything in her design, it's impeccable, it's amazing. The tags, the tags were so fucking repetitive. It was constantly Gudau times Ishtar times a character called Erish Kigal, which I didn't, I'm not gonna be talking about because they don't have many works on them and any work that was available was just times Ishtar. Because I think the character is just Ishtar, but they're blonde, I don't know. There were a few I loved of Ishtar, but nothing I would ever, ever go back to. I was expecting more, but was heartfully helpful disappointed. I'm going to have to say with a heavy heart, B tier. Next is Archer. A little late in the list, I know, but bear with me here. And I, I've been avoiding the the men in the Fate series because there's so few of them. I kind of expect they're all gonna kind of be the same. You know, either it'll just be Yaoi with them times characters or mostly it's going to be like gang gang. You know, it'll be like the typical. Like I figured I already knew what to expect to a very high degree. But I 
was pleasantly surprised. A lot of the works ha well, that I saw were of the obvious kind of Rin times Archer, Ishtar times Archer, you know. Like, if I didn't know the story to a point, I would assume that due to the amount of works that there are of Rin times Archer, or Ishtar times Archer, that they would be canon. And I'm no vanilla girl here. I, I'm no, like, if I see the tag vanilla, I am running the fuck away. Genuinely, there was one work in here that I kept going back to just because I, I thought it was the sweetest thing. And it was called Kokoro wa Karada de Dekiteiri Teiru. And it's Ishtar times Archer. And there was another one that I... It, the art for this one, really, really good. Amazing. But I really liked Futari Hajimete no XXX. Well, their first... <laughs> which the art for this one is quite dated, but it it's still... It's a very comfy one. It's a very cute one. And the dialogue was made it, like, very wholesome. And I hate that. You Listen, I'm not here to read wholesome hentai. I'm here, you know. But for this one, it, it felt... It was... It was nice. Like, a lot of the art was very nice, you know, it was nice. But the dialogue was the best part of the Archer ones with Rin. And listen, again, I don't really like vanilla, but Jesus Christ, do I love when a character is usually proud and strong, but they slowly start to become, like, mushy and in love. I love it. I am into that shit like a white on rice. Of course, there's quite a few yaoi options, like Gilgamesh, Emiya, Lancer. You know, and the art for some of them fucking A. Oh my god, the art does not quit being beautiful. Like, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Archer was a refreshing, pleasant surprise for me. I felt clean <laughs> after reading Archer's works that I really love. The art was usually very impeccable. Very beautiful, Jesus. It's gotta be S tier if you're looking for a wholesome time. Even for me, I'm saying it's good, all right? And I hate wholesome shit. Next is Gudako or Ritsuko. But a lot of fans call her Gudako because it's kind of like the female equivalent of Gudao. It's like female protagonist. And because it is like the female protagonist version of Gudao, I thought a lot of the tags would be kind of similar, but switched, you know, like, because it's a girl, all the guys would ever be gangbanging on Gudako, or like, you know, just be kind of typical, like, what all the other girls have, like, you know, gangbang, you know, just like another girl, I'm just, you know, living it up, vanilla, but no, no, fucking no. Gudako does have the same tags as Gudao. But to a very, they have the same tags, okay? Like, same tags, but Gudako is fucking, she is a problem child. Okay, she is a goddamn fucking menace. So, so, so much scenario. And it'd be for like, the, the scenarios would be like, oh, a character's just like doing something normal. And suddenly Gudako's just like, hey, 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 let's just like, let's go. I'm suddenly, you know, like I'm a futanari. Let's get, let's have sex. And the character would be like, I'm busy. But then they end up having sex. And then it's just like, oh my God, Gudako, you silly girl. Silly, silly person. And listen, Gudako is always in charge. Gudako tells you, you can jump, you ask how high. Every dojin. Gudako will fuck every single girl, guy, anything that walks their way. Be it Denari, be it just normal cooch, be, I don't know. I, th there's so much Gudako has that uh, she possesses so much that I just can't. I can't. Gudako is the wild child of this tier list. They, I don't know. I can't expect anything with this character. The only thing I can say is that they are dominant, but fuck me. They are spontaneous shit. A wild card I was not expecting. No one is safe from Gudako. A tier. Next is Swan Zhang. Sw Swan Zhang. I don't. I can't pronounce it. Swan. She's on. And I'm gonna start off by just saying uh, this. Don't. Just don't do it. Don't look her up. I'm. I'm trying to protect it here because horses are her thing. She is that crazy horse girl, but tight version. I, I, kind of like Ryder, but a lot of the works that this character has is, is horses. A lot of their works. There is one, I did have to sit, like, from the ones I've sifted through, I was able to find some good normal ones. There was one gorgeous one I came across called Human Power Plant, but there is a lot of sifting thing you have to go through, and there's so many horse ones that honestly I found it kind of un unbearable. Although I'm sure there are plenty of great normal, you know, normal swans, you know, 
works. I'm sorry, but I there was too much there's too much going on that I don't I have to say F tier. Next is Ushiwakamaru. And this was a pleasant surprise after the previous one because it was an it was a muscle girl. A lot of muscle tags. Switch things up a bit, love it. But it was just kind of usually her and Gudao. And it was kind of like very vanilla-y all the time. It's a typical nakadashi, but there was some things thrown in there sometimes, like some cucking, threesomes with other characters. There were some like hidden snacks sometimes. But altogether, very safe option. Very, very, very safe, but a bit too safe. So B tier. And lastly is Soji. A very popular character who seems like another fan favorite. And this character gives off essentially what I thought Shielder or Mash would be, which is very soft, you know, blushes easily, you know, is a very shy, shy girl, which isn't uncommon in Hentai by any means, but it definitely has been throughout this whole tier list. And the art, the art is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. There's one series called Okita's Hot Spring and ugh, just, just, and although it is just Gudao times Soji, 10 out of 10, one of the most amazing works that I've read throughout this whole thing. Art, story, everything amazing. And in terms of tags, there were some different ones like armpit licking, inverted nipples, which also was kind of a common thing throughout the whole tier list, but I don't really notice that. A lot of bikini, which always a good time. You wouldn't be disappointed. So it's gotta be a tier. Once again, if you guys would like to see this video uncensored, please check out my Patreon link in the description. This has been a wild, wild ride. I... Jesus Christ. We're getting this everything together. It feels like this has been going... I've done this, like, so many characters, but I, I haven't. In reality, there, uh, there's not been much. I tried focusing on the ones that had the most works, or at least were so pretty popular, or ones that I knew of. So this has been... <laughs> It is so, yeah, yep, still got quite a lot. This video is quite of a long one already, I can feel it. I mean, I've been recording for quite a while now already. Either way, thank you guys again, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!